Pre-recorded from your eye doctor, it's Saturday night. Welcome back to Eye School with Dr. D. On tonight's episode, I'm gonna be talking you through a case of neurotrophic keratitis. So tonight's video is a little bit different. I know normally on Saturdays I have React videos, but I don't have a video of this to show you. Instead, we're gonna talk about neurotrophic keratitis, what it is, what sort of case it might present like, and then I'll talk you through some of the treatments that we have for the disease. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. So tonight's episode is about neurotrophic keratitis, but before you go clicking away, because that sounds crazy, um, it's actually something that can be confused with dry eye or can actually be present in dry eye as well. So if you have symptoms of dryness, make sure to tune in for the whole video to hear all about it. Before we do all of that, um, if you're not subscribed already, make sure to click that button down below so that you never miss a video. So neurotrophic keratitis is actually considered to be pretty rare. It's something that I traditionally haven't seen very often in my practice um, because I have always thought of it in its latest stages where folks have um, neurotrophic ulcers and really bad corneal problems from NK. That's what I'll call neurotrophic keratitis in this video. So however, NK probably actually comes on pretty slowly over time. And in fact, there are actually three stages to neurotrophic keratitis that we'll talk about today. With that being said, because it can happen in dry eye patients, it's something that I wanted to talk about and kind of talk about how you might differentiate if you have NK versus if you just have sort of normal dry eye. So what is NK? It's actually a degenerative disease of the cornea, and it's a disorder in which damage has been caused to the trigeminal nerve, and then you have a decrease in your corneal sensation because of the impairment of the corneal nerves. This results in a breakdown of your corneal epithelium and an impairment of the healing of the actual cornea itself. So why in the world would something like this happen? So any condition that is gonna impair trigeminal innervation could end up causing neurotrophic keratitis. Some really common things we see in the eye world are herpetic eye infections. So whether that's due to herpes simplex and you've had prior herpes simplex eye infections or herpes zoster. If you've ever had a shingles episode where you have that breakout on your face, Hutchinson sign where you have that little a breakout on the tip of your nose, it's very likely to have corneal involvement in that case. And herpetic eye infections are actually the leading cause of NK. Herp, herp. <laughs> herpetic eye infections actually cause up to 12% of all neurotrophic keratitis. And so if you've ever had that type of infection, it is, it's important to sort of have that in the back of your mind that if you're later having issues with your cornea, it could be due to neurotrophic keratitis and that prior herpes infection. All right, so a couple of other things. So neurosurgical procedures, um, chemical or physical injuries to the eye itself, drug toxicity, long-term chronic ocular surface inflammation or injury, corneal dystrophies, and even diabetes can cause neurotrophic keratitis long-term. All right, so why would it be a problem if your corneal nerves are not working properly? The reason that's a huge problem is that having corneal nerves intact that are working and sending messages back and forth to your brain is very important to maintain a healthy ocular surface and even a healthy tear homeostasis. That's because these nerves are consistently releasing neuromediators that support the corneal epithelial cells. This elicits a protective reflex like blinking and tearing. So you can imagine if you have an impairment of these nerves and they are unable to release the neuromediators, you're gonna have a lack of blinking, of tearing, and we know in dry eye this is gonna lead to problems you know, distributing your tears and having a healthy tear film, which is gonna lead down the line to inflammation of the ocular surface and dry eye types of symptoms. 
So when damage occurs to the nerves, you have a disruption in this feedback loop that's supposed to happen, and you end up having a decrease in epithelial cell renewal. That's the very top layer of your cornea that's critical for ocular surface clarity and or optical clarity, ocular surface health, and then optical clarity or actually being able to see well. So the corneal epithelium itself, that very top layer, is actually crucial in regulating nerve fibers as well because that is emitting um, NGF, neurotrophins, neurovascular growth factor, and it helps homeostasis of the tear film. Now this whole thing obviously gets very, very complementary. <laughs> this whole thing gets very complicated, but what we're trying to do here is just kind of give you a sense of it. Obviously, that's a complicated process. This is very surface level, but essentially any of these things, whether it's chronic inflammation, injury to the front of the eye, diabetes, having prior herpetic infections in your eye, you've got then corneal nerves that aren't working as well, they're not talking to the brain as well, and so now you're starting to have a breakdown of ocular surface. And that's exactly what we see. So the very first sign in mild NK is just having some SPK or what we call little dry spots on the front surface of the eye. And then you get into the moderate and severe levels where you can have you know, a rolled edge ulcer that's non-healing of the cornea. And um, NK can actually even lead to scarring the, the cornea can actually perforate. It can get really, really bad. You can have permanent thinning of the cornea because it's just unable to function as it's supposed to do. The way that we test for NK in the office, it's usually, it's very interesting. I found that the more I think about this disorder, the more I'm looking for it and testing for it. And the, the best test, honestly, is to just test corneal sensitivity. And the way you test corneal sensitivity seems a little barbaric perhaps, but in our clinic, we just take a cotton wisp. So you take a cotton, cotton tip applicator that's sterile obviously and pull. So you have a little wisp and just gently sort of touch the cornea. Anybody with normal corneal sensitivity is going to blink right away. It's gonna feel awful, but you'll find that patients with decreased corn corneal sensitivity don't even feel that cotton wisp at all. This is not something that I want any of you doing at home, by the way. This is just to tell you how your doctor will test for corneal sensitivity in their office. So how would we manage neurotrophic keratitis differently than we would manage dry eye? Well, it's actually pretty difficult and challenging. This is one of the most difficult things to treat clinically. Um, I recently had a patient who had um, LASIK surgery with multiple touch-ups in each eye and then underwent cataract surgery. And in this particular case, those corneas just said, we're done here, that's enough. Um, and she started having lots and lots of signs, not only of dry eye, there's an underlying dry eye component, but just unable to get that cornea to heal. So how are we gonna get it to heal? Traditionally, all we've been able to do is to keep that ocular surface moisturized, right? If it's not moisturizing itself, then all we can do is try to replace those tears, you know, preservative-free artificial tears, ointments. Um, if it gets really bad, it, we used to, we still can do a tarsorophy where we, you know, partially or fully sew the lid shut. We also can do amniotic membrane grafts. Um, I made a separate video about that long time ago. I need to do an update, but I'll link it here and let me know if you want me to update that in the future. But we can do an amniotic membrane to help the healing of the cornea. However, just very recently, I believe it's been in the last two years, we have a new drug called Oxervate. So Oxervate is the newest drug that's available to treat this condition, NK. And Oxervate is actually a biologic. I've had great results with it in my clinic. It's a drop that is pretty intensive. You have to take it six times a day for eight weeks, but it's a two month course. And the drug is actually working to wake up those nerves, regenerate those nerves. And I've seen it do really great things and reduce staining in the few patients I've used it in. So if you're suffering from dry eye and you know your cornea just won't heal, this is just something to think about. Maybe have your doctor test your corneal sensitivity next time you're in. 
especially if you look at that list and go, yeah, I've had ocular injuries. I've had LASIK a few times with touch-ups and I've had herpetic eye infections. If you start to check those boxes and you're having a lot of dry eye that won't heal, NK, although it's rare, is another condition you can think about. I hope this video helped you and you got something from it. If you're suffering from dry eye and not getting any relief, make sure to leave a comment down below. I love to have conversations with you guys um, about dry eye, especially ocular surface disease. If you've been diagnosed with neurotrophic keratitis, I wanna hear about that as well. So make sure to leave your comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.